All right. Well, we're going to first talk about breastfeeding in Australia and how it is now illegal in Australia to say that men cannot breastfeed or should not breastfeed. Um, so if I say that in Australia, if I'm just if I go there on a well, I don't know. Well, it doesn't it. seem like there is actually a law on the books. But what we're going to talk about is two women in Australia. One's a lactation consultant and the other one is a women advocate and the, a head of a women's advocacy group. Both of them wrote something on Twitter saying that men can't breastfeed and they received notices from Twitter saying you were in violation of the law. In violation of the law saying that men can't breastfeed. A violation uh, of the Australian law. And so those tweets, because I am not in Australia, those tweets are available for me to see, but they are unavailable inside of Australia. And Twitter said, OK, we'll take those down and we'll let that person know that we can't show these tweets in Australia. I'm going to show you the tweets in question. I'm going to show you the uh, notices from Twitter and you decide for yourself if there actually is a law that says that we must speak this untruth that men can breastfeed. Uh, I refuse to say that. And so I'm going to say as much on this platform and we'll see how far it goes. Okay, so today we're going to talk about three women being punished for saying things that hurt men's feelings. Because the men are saying they're women and their feelings are more important. Two English speaking countries, two crazy stories where we're pretending it was women whose feelings were hurt by real women. The truth is that it's men whose feelings are hurt by, they say, these women. Uh, here's the first one. First to England. She is a woman of color. This is Baroness Kishwar Faulkner. She's Pakistani. And uh, she's being investigated and they're calling for her firing. She heads the Equality and Human Rights Commission and people are asking for her to be fired because they say that she used the term bloke in lipstick. That's now trending on Twitter um, where people who are gen gender critical are calling out other people for dressing in woman face and saying that's a bloke in lipstick. Uh, so it's become a whole thing, right? Uh, this person, Emma Laslett, is the lipstick wearer in question. Uh, Emma Laslett is a biological male and calling for the removal of a woman of color for not respecting Laslett's womanhood. Watch. If your job is to protect people by, from discrimination and while on duty and in front of everybody else who's doing that, you are peddling that kind of discrimination, then then you're not fit for the job and honestly shouldn't be doing it anymore. Okay, I noticed that um, Emma Laslett did not wear lipstick in that interview and I have to think that that's purposeful. Some say Baroness Faulkner didn't actually say that about Emma Laslett, but rather said it as something people say. She just used the expression in meetings uh, as in people say these things, uh, she says she can prove it and she is ready to participate in this investigation and she's ready to go because she thinks she's being witch hunted. Still, in response to this, trans activists did this. What they're doing is taking bottles of piss and trying to vandalize the Human Rights Commission building that really ought to show them. Now, most likely this bloke in lipstick thing is a distraction from what Baroness Faulkner's real crime is, and that is that she wants to change the legal definition of sex to include biological sex. And that's where she became trans enemy number one, um, because, you know, trans activists have already co-opted the term gender. They want sex, too. Um, here's an article about this. And in her argument, she was asked to respond to the gender recognition bill. And she wrote what I think was a very rational letter, not at all transphobic. What she's saying here is that, you know, there is no straightforward balance, but we have come to the view that sex is defined as biological sex for the purposes of the Equality Act. And this would bring greater le legal clarity in eight areas. She talks about sports, uh, homosexual spaces, sex discrimination, equal pay. She also makes this point that if a trans person who's a biological woman then goes and legally changes her sex to male, she loses the protection of pregnancy and maternity. 
unless we change those definitions too, which I'm sure trans rights activists want to do. This is why they're after her, not just because she said bloke in lipstick. Uh, they want her entire commission decommissioned because she wrote this report. Not be, And they say that she has... Uh, fostered this community of abuse, that she's abusive and that she, you know, is transphobic. Um, you know, over 30 LGBTQ plus charities have written a letter saying they want this commission gone. Now, I think it's worth notice noting here that this doesn't help trans people. Trans people are more likely on average, this is the statistics, on average to be poorer than the average citizen. And they have a higher medical ex expenses because of the medicalization of their bodies and a higher incidence of mental health problems. So when trans organizations like this make this big stink about these kind of things, you're hurting our feelings, right? They actually make it less likely for their community to get a job. Um, as a business owner, of course, you would think twice about the enormous liability of using the wrong speech. Like, okay, maybe I'm going to honor your pronouns, but I can't be sure that every one of my employees does. And what if one of my employees goes with their instinctual, uh, you know, sensing of your gender and calls you the wrong gender, then I'm being sued. This tracks with a recent business.com survey that found that a resume with pronouns was less likely to get a job of than course. one without. Like if I'm sitting there going through a stack of resumes and I see, oh, this person changes their pronouns, this is going to be a pain. This person, I'm sorry, is going to be a pain in the ass. Oh, yes. And they're proving this to us, right? And so there's, so they did a an experiment where they took one resume without any pronouns and the other resume said they, them. And it was all of these less likely to be called back for a job uh, because someone's like, uh, do I really want the liability? Do I want to be constantly lectured about how to speak? Right. Do I want to constantly be like minding my P's and Q's knowing that I have a whole rich government organization going to come down on me if I say one wrong word? I would also love to know the data and maybe we could find this out someday. The difference between like hard workers, like the type of person is that the person that doesn't use pronoun switching like that is going to be like a hard worker. is going to get the job done. Or is the person who is like changing their pronouns and feels the need to lecture everyone in the office about their pronouns, are they going to be the victim? They're going to be the ones that are always taking sick days. They're never going to be there because it's, a, okay. it's always I mean, a woe is me. We also gazing. could make the, the argument they are legitimately always sick because the medicines that True. they are taking are True. making them sick. True. And mentally sick, by the way, on top of it. Right. Right. Um, Yes. And, you know, research has shown that like it keeps because if you've blocked your puberty, you have not been able to mature. You are not going to be the best worker, the the best fit for the job if you've not had a because puberty is not just to be a reproductive being. It's to mature your brain, to make decisions. So it's like, do I, you know, hop off a moving car or not? Those are things that like teenagers are more likely to do be, and then less likely to do after puberty, right? Right. Anyway, um, again, when these communities sort of yell and scream that they're being treated the wrong way and that, you know, they want anyone who's guilty of that to be sacked, they're really doing their own communities no, no favors. Uh, such as this video you may have seen of an English trans man who was fired for screaming at a woman in Starbucks for this episode. Now get out. Now get out. You are not having one, do you? Hi, get out. You are trespassing now. They've got cameras. You are trespassing. Get out. Get out. You are trespassing. Apparently, said something transphobic. You actually, actually. Okay, so I'm cutting the video here. It continues to go on just because sometimes we have rules about how much like aggression Violence. we can we can show on these platforms. Um, but he goes and attacks that person. And like tries to wrestle the camera away. Um, and so that person was fired. And then also has a trickle down effect because it makes it less likely that people like that person will be hired because of this behavior. It's just it's just not helping. Right. OK, so on to another uh 
person who is not helping. The government has asked Twitter to remove tweets from a lactation consultant for saying that men can't breastfeed. We touched on this story a few days ago. This is a man in Australia who fathered a biological son, but then now says he's a trans woman. And so he is trying to, he tried, this was a few years ago, to pump himself full of hormones in order to breastfeed the baby. What he did specifically is up his estrogen and took a drug called Doparin, dom, domperidone. Um, it's an anti-nausea medication. It's not for babies. And it's known to increase your hormone level of prolactin, which can cause your breasts to swell up and make milk during and after pregnancy. It is by no means studied what to do heck? this. Uh, in fact, doctors told him not to do it. And here's what he said anyway to, I think this was the Daily Mail, um, saying, being a trans woman, I can't carry. It's one of the limitations of it all. <laughs> yeah, of it all. Right. This yeah. whole being I'm a man not a thing. I'm a woman. Uh, one of the difficult things of being a man is that I'm not a woman. Right. You don't have a womb. Where's the baby going to gestate? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, to know I could breastfeed my own child and have that experience, I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to know what it was like to be a mom and breastfeed. Um, again, it's I want, I want, I want, not yeah, what's wrong me, with me, the me. baby. Now, as someone who, again, nursed three babies to about a year and a half each, I know that what I want is really irrelevant. Like how many times did you cut my dinner? Because when we would go somewhere and my dinner would come, the baby would smell food and want to nurse. And, and so I like, would be uh, like this and Clayton would, would like, cut my food yeah. because it's not at all about what I want. It's not like, oh, I really want to feel the experience. Although it's beautiful to nurse. Um, that's not it. it that is not getting the, the experience. You're not at all getting the real experience if it's just about what you want to feel. That is, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this as someone who was pretty stinging good at nursing. You're doing it wrong. And you're selfish. Yeah, yes. It's all about, be again, it's swimming in the lake of me. You know, it's like, what, a, what do I want? So I'm going to pump myself full of all of these drugs that are then going to go into the child. Yeah. Right. That, or however they're going to get there. I don't know. I mean, uh, we I can't drink that. coffee when we are, some women do, right? We're not supposed to drink alcohol. We're not supposed to have like, you know, when we're pregnant, certain cheeses, frozen yogurt, although I did do the frozen yogurt, uh, it, you know, th because we're worried about the baby, not yes. about like, oh, will this be a sensual experience for me? What the heck is that? Uh, so here is Jasmine Sussex, who was a lactation consultant for 20 years. If you've ever known a lactation consultant, they are amazing ladies. I had one who helped me through a baby with tongue tie. Wouldn't have got through it without her. She was amazing. Here is the tweet that she sent saying babies can smell their mother's milk and turn towards it. This baby sleeping through his dad's sad attempt to be the mom. Like... They're not going to latch. That's not. I held my kids. I held my babies all the time. I would hold them and I, and they would snuggle up to me. Some of my greatest memories holding my little, my three little kids and they would fall asleep in my arms. And did like you ever football. think like, like Oh, like I wish I could have more. Let me. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like here. I'm like, you know what? While you're down there, why don't you just, you know, well, you're, well, let's and you're saying they never attempted to latch like. They no, they that's root. my point. They never, they never would attempt to latch on me. Like I'm holding the baby like a little football, and they would just go to sleep. No, like, they're when not... they're teeny, they root like this on anybody. They're just like, where ah, is ah, it? Ah, but they're ah, smelling ah. around for it. They also, there's a reason your areola gets so dark is because the contrast they can't see. So that contrast, they're looking for the contrast. They're trying to smell, and then when they get near it, they actually open their mouth. The baby won't open their mouth for a, for a man. Wiley C in our chat or Willie C in our chat says, uh, I also, I love the, um, the Jack avatar from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas says, this is child cruelty. It is. Or child yeah. abuse, right? I, you know, I talked about this with my sister-in-law today because she also nursed for quite a long time, all her three babies. And she worked in child protective services. And I was like, would you take a child away for this, uh, now she lives in Pennsylvania, so she has nothing to do with Australian law. And she said, if we knew the parent was on illegal drugs, we would. 
Um, but you can't go down the route of like, are some moms on antidepressants and then they're nursing, you know, that's, a, that's, that's tough. Yeah. Anyway, uh, here's the, the notice that Jasmine Sussex, the lactation consultant got from Twitter saying that this tweet, uh, had to be taken down in Australia because of Australia's local laws, but says that content remains available elsewhere. So we can still see it. Um, you know, she, they're saying that these are the laws and she didn't know that, that you can't say, you know, oh, it's sad that the baby <laughs> didn't latch on, you know, right. that, oh, that's a sad attempt. Like what is illegal about that? She's pushing back by Facts. putting, yeah, uh, by putting in a freedom of information request to the Australian e-safety commissioner over this suppression. She thinks that's the agency that was behind this. And she wants to know. Who made Twitter do this? What is the law I've broken? I want to see what how this decision was made. She says, I will not be intimidated. Again, if you've ever met a lactation consultant, uh, I wouldn't mess with them. So uh, she doubled down on her Twitter feed today. She just posted this about fatherhood, saying fatherhood is selfless. These men who coerce their female partners into this unethical live experiment on the baby must be stopped. Live human experiment. Yeah. I mean, it was a human experiment on a baby. Yeah. Um, for their own validation, for the validation of an ideology. You're screwing up this baby on top of it. Uh, the baby's now three. They say the baby's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, no comment. Right. I don't know. I don't know the child. Maybe the child's very loved. I, I hope for their sake it is. Um, you know, I, I would also hope for their sake that this is not a story that follows that child into school either. Like, can you imagine? No. Your schoolmates? Like your schoolmates that, know the child. They're like, oh, that was Billy. That, that Billy. Billy was sexually abused at a, as a infant. As a Yeah, newborn. you were all over the internet because you were sucking on your dad's breasts. Do you realize that? Like this is the kind of stuff that screws kids up for life, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. And then finally, this story, this is Rachel Wong. Uh, here is her tweet that earned her a letter from the uh, Twitter through the Australian government saying that LGBTIQ plus org rainbow families paid the Australian Breastfeeding Association $20,000 to create an educational booklet about lactating and chest feeding for men prior uh, profit before ethics and safeguard for babies and mothers babies are being used as props for male perversion look at the handbook that now you can get from this family organization about breastfeeding chest feeding and human milk feeding oh my god supporting these communities and families to say and so specifically they mentioned here you know that this is something men can do. Um, can, can here's, we, uh, here's the violation she got saying that again, she's in violation of law. Um, so I will just wrap this up by saying, you know, these are three women, real women, uh, who are being attacked by biological men who say they hurt their feelings and you can't hurt their feelings. Um, you know, again, do we stand for this? Do we stand for our governments supporting these biological men picking on real women? No. Do we? It's it's for yes. us collectively to decide. No, we don't. We don't. Um, but I also want to see like, to. like if we can get tickets to Mars. If there's an opportunity for us to to just like create a new colony on Mars. Yeah. And get off this freaking place right now. Uh, right. Go ahead, Philip. If it, if it means I'll never have to hear the phrase human milk feeding again, I'm going to Mars with you. Yeah, that's that has got to be one of the most awful, awful phrases I've ever heard. Yeah. I don't what does that even mean? Is there human. something even grosser I haven't considered that it could mean? I don't even know. I don't even want to think about it. How many people in the chat would love to leave this this crazy? Because what I what scares me the most about it is that it's not breast milk, that maybe it's not breast milk. It's full of hormones and who knows what the hell no, it is. No, but I mean, what is being promoted here? Breastfeeding, chest feeding, and human milk feeding that maybe it's not real breast milk. It's some other well, synthetically synthetic. produced, like what, what this person in Australia said that he produced was colostrum. 
Cholesterol is what you make before your real milk comes in. There's no nutrients and there's no, um, there's no fat in it. It can't, it can't, subs it, the baby can't subsist on it. Um, and in fact, you even sometimes have it. Don't do that. You're like this. Mm -hmm. He's like, Lifestyle. no more, no more breastfeeding stories. Sometimes you have it before the baby is even born. And so, but men, I mean, come on this, this, uh, well, I don't even I, want to think about I, what I it's making like, me sick. It's making yeah, me there's sick. Men that are actually saying they're going to have uteruses transplanted into them so that they can carry a baby. And so I think that people that have this level of need for this will have breasts made that have an injection point to inject milk in order to get that. You know what I mean? I, there's, I don't think there's an extreme they will not go to in order to make them feel like they are actually the other gender. It's transhumanism. I mean, this is exactly yeah. what we're, this is transhumanism. This is part of their agenda. I mean, this is why the World Economic Forum loves transhumanism. Like, how can the biopharmaceutical complex make billions of dollars off of this removing, removing biological sex from us? It's, it's really, I mean, in that case, it's better to bottle feed because... If you're yeah. not actually, if you don't have a breast that's breastfeeding, you're, you're in conversation with your baby. Like you read based on the enzymes in their mouth, your body knows how to make the right milk for them. Yeah. The, you know, you're in a conversation with your baby and you, you know, if you want to simulate it with one of those like wrap around things and put formula in it, do it. Or, you know, one, one person's pumping or something f fine. Right. But this, that yeah. that's not really nursing. So, and, and it's also just bad for the baby for a couple of reasons. One, you know how hard women work to get a good latch mm -hmm. and then you're confusing a baby with not, not a real nipple that doesn't make that milk like that's hard for the baby and also the baby expends energy to nurse like they expend calories to nurse and they're not getting anything back it's they're supposed to be getting more calories than they put out this baby was put in a dangerous situation that was the opposite where they were latching and not getting milk back and that's it's cruel yeah, Otmar says, I'm in a nightmare, and I'm with you. I'm right there with you in this nightmare. Uh, absolutely, this is absolutely crazy. It's seriously crazy, crazy stuff. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.